Today I'm going to show you how to make these simple wooden Halloween candy holders that kind of double as decorations. Got three different styles, a jack-o'-lantern, a glow-in-the-dark ghost, and a bat. And you can fill them with whatever candy you want, and my kids think they're pretty cool. So the stuff you're going to need, uh, as far as supplies go, you're going to need some 2x10 construction lumber. I'm doing three different candy holders, so I've got three different pieces of wood. They're roughly a foot long. Basically, if, if they're as big as your pattern, you're going to be fine. You, of course, need a pattern. I have mine printed on cardstock. You could draw your own. I'll have these uh, available on my website for a couple bucks. There'll be a link in the description if you want it the easy way. And then I'll cut this out, and then we'll use that to trace onto the wood. If, you, if your printer can't handle heavy cardstock, you could print on regular paper, grab a glue stick, and just stick that down to some poster board, cut it out, and trace these out. You're going to need some plexiglass. Uh, the sheet I'm using is an 11 by 14. Uh, that's 0 0.093 inches thick. And it's Lexan. It's nice and strong. But it's also kind of pricey. I think this, this sheet was like $9. So just keep that in mind. You, you could get it a little cheaper if you want a little bit thinner. But don't go too thin. You'll need some screws to attach this over the candy hole. Um, I'm going with stainless steel uh, pan head screws. These are a number six half inch long. They don't need to be stainless steel. I just like the look of the stainless steel a little better than the zinc coated screws. Zinc are about half the price though. And there's a couple ways that you can cut these out. I'm just going to use a little hobby knife, exacto knife, whatever you want to call it. Scissors would work just as well. All right, so now start cutting. All right, there's the main body. With this particular one, the left arm is going to be the, the plug for the candy hole, so that is cut out separate. This is for the plexiglass to cover the hole. And just a, a tip, don't take the, the protective film off of the plexiglass yet. You wanna wait till after it's cut and drilled, because this way we can use uh, like a Sharpie or something to copy this on, get it all cut out, drill our holes, then take this off, and none of those marks will be left. Okay. So the ghost is ready, just got to do the same thing for the other two. I'm going to start with the ghost first. This we can set aside because that's for the plexiglass. Now with a ghost where he's got one straight side, you can just butt that up against the edge of the wood and save yourself some cutting and get a straighter edge. If you do that, keep in mind that two by fours do have a rounded edge. I'm gonna end up rounding over the corners all the way around just to make it softer anyway, so that'll blend in and match but if you were going to leave your corners square, you might not want this edge because then you'd have one round edge and then one straight edge and that would look funny. You want to make sure and draw this center line onto the wood as well because that is needed to line up your drill bit so that your arms are in the same position. I'm going to take the template for the arm and put it on the same side that way I can drill both of these at the same time before I start cutting, and it might just be a little bit easier that way. Obviously with this big of a piece of wood, I could put this anywhere, but uh, this just makes it a little easier to drill. And you need the center line for this as well. Now for that center line, you also want to bring it around the other edge. It'll just make it easier to line up the drill bit. And then you also need to find the center point. If you're using two by fours, they're an inch and a half thick, so you just gotta measure in three quarters of an inch. And 
and we're ready to drill. You could do this with a hand drill if you're really careful, but you'd probably want to clamp the board against your workbench or wherever you're working on this to help keep it straight because you, you want that hole to be as straight as possible so that the dowel can slide in and out. I'm going to use my drill press, but like I say, you can do it with a hand drill. I'm using a wooden hand screw to help keep the board up and down. And as far as the depth, it just you just need to drill deep enough that it goes into the hole where the cavity is going to be, which is going to be about an inch and a quarter. For the arm, we only need to drill down about half an inch. Now we're ready to head to the bandsaw. Pretty much any bandsaw will work for this as long as you have a narrow blade. If you don't have a bandsaw, you could also do this with a scroll saw. And you could even do it with a jigsaw. You just have to be really careful because of how small this overall workpiece is. And you'd probably want to clamp your workpiece down against a workbench or something so that it's not wobbling around and so you can keep your fingers free of the blade. Now to cut the center out, I'm going to use the bandsaw. Obviously there's no way to get in here without cutting through the wood, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut straight in from somewhere down here, cut the circle out, and then the place where I have that saw curve, I'm going to put some glue in there and clamp it. Now you could also just drill a hole through this and use a jigsaw or a skill saw to avoid having that cut, but I just wanted to show one another way to do it that actually works pretty well. Also, if you had a really big hole saw that just happened to be that size, that would also work. This is a trick I picked up in a Jimmy DiResta video, actually, a long time ago when he was cutting out letters for something. I'm just going to get some glue. I'm going to do it on all sides, just just so I think that works a little better. And then I'm going to try to work it into the joint a little bit. Wipe off the excess. And then I'm gonna use my fingers to try to keep these two in line. And then just grab a clamp and slowly tighten that together until it starts to hold even. And you should get a little bit of squeeze out. And that's it. Let that dry for an hour and uh, we'll be ready to sand and route the outside. I'm going to go ahead and trace out the pumpkin real quick and the top for it, and just like I did with the ghost, I'm going to try to have one edge of each of these close to the edge of the board, just to make it easier to drill the hole. 
and you also just like before you want to make sure and copy the center lines so that those are easy to match up and for this one since it's curved and the bottom is curved it's curved there so that it'll match the profile of the pumpkin for that one I'm actually going to draw a center line first that way I can just line the template up with that center line and still get the straight hole that I am after. And like before, I extended the center line along the edge of the board and found the center point there, so I'm ready to drill. For these holes, because there's a, a gap here, you do need to go a little bit deeper. I probably drilled about three quarters of an inch in on this one. And over here, where you're, you need to go through this entire width, I think I probably drilled two inches just to make sure I've got all that. All right, and here's the pumpkin. I didn't think you needed to see this whole bit on the bandsaw. I did the same type of cut through here to clear out the middle. Here's the top. On the plans, I think I'm actually going to have two different tops for it. This one has a little bit of a curve, which I like, but I thought it might be nice to, to do one that's just straight up and down. And then you've got a choice. Now I'm using three quarter inch dowel, and this is just regular pine dowel from Home Depot. You want your dowel sections to be about an inch, inch and a quarter long, somewhere in there. If you make it too long, it's going to be really hard to get it in and out of the hole on the actual candy holder. This is kind of a happy medium that will give you enough grip that it won't just fall out, but you also won't need to be He-Man to take it apart. Cutting dowels can actually also be kind of dangerous if you're not careful. I'm going to use the bandsaw because I think that's the easiest and the safest. If you do it on the table saw or the chop saw, you really got to make sure you've got something holding this work down secure, otherwise pieces will go flying. Also, just a regular old handsaw would work. In fact, if I didn't have a bandsaw, a handsaw is what I would use. in is simple. Just put a little bit of glue in the hole that you had drilled earlier. Spread it around. Grab one of your pieces and just work that in. It may need a little persuasion. those dry. So I've got the bat traced on and the bat I did a little bit different. I did it at an angle because the hole that I need to drill is coming in at the side. And I'm also going to cut this out a little different because of all these little tight spots. Um, some of these will be hard to get on the bandsaw. So I'm going to rough cut it and probably do some of these parts on the bandsaw and then I think all of these little curves and these little points and these inner teeth and stuff, all of that I will do on the scroll saw. First I got to drill. And for this one, we're going to have to drill down quite a bit deeper than I have on the others. It's going to have to be about two and a quarter inches deep to clear that edge right there. <laughs> out very well, doesn't eject the chips, you are going to have to stop and clean that out a few times on a hole that's deep. And this one we only have to drill down about an inch.
Alright, so with the bat cut out, I drilled a few holes in here so that I can drop the scroll saw blade through. Got the main piece out, so now I'm just going to clean up some of these corners. Okay. There's the bat with his ear. So now I'm probably going to sand some of these edges and round over the corners just just to make it a little more smooth to the touch and then once it's sanded uh, we'll be ready to paint to sand some of these curves one thing that you can do is take some of your leftover dowel because you're gonna have plenty I think you can normally only get it in three foot sections wrap some sandpaper around that and then you can use that as a sanding block to get in on these curved surfaces. Or if you have a spindle sander, that would also work. And if your, if your plug is fitting really tight, you can take your same X-Acto blade or hobby knife, whatever, and add kind of a chamfer around the edges here, just kind of slice that away to be, a, to have kind of an angled face. And then also take some of that sandpaper, roll it up a little smaller, and then shove it in that hole and just kind of lightly sand around that to widen the hole a little bit. I also like to add just a little bit of uh, either beeswax or paraffin wax on the outside of this after the painting is done. So for the round over I'm just using a little eighth inch radius bit and I'm just going to go around the outside edges. The inside I'm not going to bother with because the plexiglass is going to go over that and it's such a narrow tolerance going all the way around, I, I just don't want to risk getting in the way of, of the wood that the screw needs to be able to bite into. So now the edges are nice and rounded over. And uh, on the bat, we're ready to paint. I'm going to go ahead and round over the edges on the pumpkin and the uh, ghost as well. So I'm going to start with the pumpkin and I'm just using this uh, folk art pure orange multi-surface paint and it might help to actually do a primer coat first but I'm not going to. All right for the bat, I'm going to start out with multi-surface licorice. For the ghost, I'm going to start off with uh, titanium white as my uh, primer because I'm going to do this glow-in-the-dark paint over the top of it. And it does a little better if it's primed first. If you have a good green that would make a nice color for the pumpkin stem, of course just go with that. I've got the ghost painted all in white and then I did a couple coats of this folk art glow paint over the top of that. You need the white first as a primer because the uh, this glow paint is, is really thin and whatever is beneath it pretty much still shows through. So I've put a couple coats of that on. Next I'm going to give them some eyes. So I did the, the eyes kind of elongated so that it'll look like he's kind of scared or surprised 
to go along with the, the really big mouth. Once these dry, I'll do the same thing on the other side. For the bat, I painted his teeth white on both sides and then added just a little bit of red at the tips of the teeth, kind of like he's been biting people. And so now I'm going to paint eyes on him as well, just using titanium white. And when I cut this, I, it's not perfectly even on both sides, so it's, it's going to look a little distorted, but a mouth that big on a bat is distorted to begin with, so I'm okay with that. Try to duplicate that on the other side. Okay. And that's it for the bat. For the pumpkin, or I guess jack-o'-lantern, I'm going to try to do some triangle eyes in black. Triangle shaped eyes in black on both sides, really wide. I'm not doing a full triangle. I'm leaving that little bump there so it's a little bit of a kawaii style to make it look like he's happy or laughing. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay, now we just need to cut the plastic and get it screwed on. So for the plexiglass, Lexan, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start tracing the templates on here. If you are doing multiple pieces, it's probably a good idea beforehand to try to arrange these on your plexiglass in such a way that you can maximize the cuts that you're going to get. Uh, just so you don't have to buy extra the centers of the holes. I'm just going to use this punch to leave a mark. Alternatively, you could probably take a small leather punch or something, punch that hole out, and just fill that in with Sharpie as well. Now we can start cutting. Okay, I've got an eighth inch drill bit in my drill press, and I'm just going to drill through at those points that I hit with the punch. You could do this also obviously with a hand drill, uh, but I would suggest having some sort of a, a sacrificial base to have it on so that you're not bending the plastic too much, because we are kind of close to the edge. Okay, that's it. Now you might be tempted to go ahead and rip the plastic off. Don't do that just yet. Uh, we want to put this over next to our candy holders and, and make sure that the size is good. Make sure we don't need to sand any of these edges down or anything before we remove this. Now before I start just putting the screws in, I also need to pre-drill into the wood so that we don't split it. And I'm just using the same size drill bit, still an eighth of an inch. I'm going to go ahead and put in just that one screw to help hold this in place so I can drill the others. At this point, we're ready to go ahead and take the protective film off and screw these on. Flip them over and do the other side. 
and the ghost is done, ready to fill with candy. I'm going to go ahead and do the others real quick. And they're done. We've got the jack-o'-lantern, the ghost, and the bat. And if I were to turn off the lights, the ghost would glow, but my camera isn't good enough to be able to pick it up. So you'll just have to take my word for it. Hit like if you like this uh, project, this video. And if you want to see more of the things that I make in my shop, please subscribe. And like I said, the plans for all three of these candy holders are available on my website. Link will be in the description. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.